welcome to the toilet training series part two. In this segment, we're going to be discussing how do I know, how do I assess my child's readiness to be trained? So in part one, we discussed what the steps are, what the tasks are that my child has to master in order to be completely trained. And yes, it is a nice list. So before we start the process, we really want to feel pretty confident that my child can do this. And what we want to know is that even though there is that whole long list of tasks that they have to master, that when they're ready, they do, they do it. It's incredible, but it does happen. And we watch it happen. And it's a, actually a really beautiful thing that we can look at after the process is all over when we're no longer worried about it we can see how beautiful it is, the progression from being completely dependent on us to take care of changing them and cleaning them to then being able to take care of their needs on their own in a respectful way. So how do I know if my child is ready for this big, huge next stage? So let's look at some readiness skills that are gonna to point to the fact that yes, my child is ready at this point. Okay, so number one is if I see that my child understands and is able to complete more than one task at a time, then that's one indication that their brain has developed to the point in a cognitive way that they're it's one of the signs that yes, they may be ready to be trained. So for example, what I mean is more than one task. Let's say I say to my child, please can you pick up this wrapper and throw it in the garbage? If they're able to follow through on that, picking it up and throwing it out, then that's a very good sign that they're getting to that stage that they're ready to accomplish this. So that's number one, okay? Now, I just wanna say, uh, little caveat there, which is that I don't mean that your child listens to you whenever you ask for something. If you're going to wait for that to happen, um, you may be waiting forever. So no, we're just talking about the fact that there's the ability there to possibly follow through on the command, which we'll see sometimes that the child does do what we ask. Number two, we want to see that a child can communicate his needs to us. And of course, this is going to be very helpful in the toilet training process because they may need to tell us when they have to make, um, they may need help with something, the door may be locked and um, they need help getting in to the bathroom or to wherever the potty is. They may need to go when they're not home and they need to tell us this. So of course, communicating needs is one of the signs that this step is ready to be taken. Number three is we want to see that the child's able to sit for at least a few minutes during story time or play. So kids this age don't sit for too long at a time, but when they get to a stage where I can tell them a story or we can sit and play something and they actually sit in one place for a few minutes, then that's a very important skill for them to have mastered before toilet training, which during toilet training, they're going to be able to need to sit in order to empty that bowel, especially. Number four, we want to see that the diaper stays dry for two to three hours at a time. And sometimes what happens is that parents will tell me that when the child is on taking bottles, or a lot a lot of sippy cups that the child doesn't stay dry for more than an hour and if that's the case it's going to make toilet training much harder it doesn't mean it's impossible it just means that it's it complicates it a bit so i do recommend that before starting toilet training we either want to limit those bottles somewhat um, or have them only taking cups so that they usually don't drink as much when they're doing that, of course, with getting adequate hydration, but sometimes they take excessive amounts of liquids. So if that's happening, you might wanna, before you try toilet training, seeing 
how long their diaper can stay dry and thereby getting an indication of whether or not it might be a good time to start. Number five is if my child indicates in some way that she has to make or that she has made, that she's some in some way aware of the process of elimination, that's another indication that my child is ready. Because like I said in part one, the brain has to be involved now in making decisions about when to go, where to go, whereas when they were a baby, that wasn't necessary. So once they start talking about I did make, I have to make, what they're saying is that their brain is already processing the fact that they have to go. So that's a good sign. Number six, and this is just a very final practical skill that needs to be um, mastered in order for them to be successfully independently trained, which is that they have to be able to take off the clothes that need to come off when they go to the bathroom, just as simple as that. So when we see that all six of these readiness signs, we can check them off, and of course, um, it's not. this is not written in stone, these are just in, indicative of readiness, we have a much higher sense of confidence that the child is ready and they can do this. Stay tuned for part three where I discuss how do I know if I, as the parent, am ready and why that's just as important as if my child is.